Agent Power Huddle is a daily jumpstart, giving you all the tools you need to create an amazing real estate career. Led by top experts in the field, you'll learn how to sell more houses in less time while creating the life you want. Welcome to the Agent Power Huddle. All right, it's go time. Fantastic. Uh, well, welcome everyone. Uh, for those of you that don't know who I am, my name is Dan Gomer. Uh, I am in Denver, Colorado, and I uh, work with uh, Monica Graves and Barry Overton. We've created a group out here called the uh, Super Agent Collaborative. And uh, so I'm really excited to be here with you today. Jesse asked me last week to come and speak about a topic that uh, is very I'm very passionate about. And I'm going to actually be teaching an in-person class here in Denver on this, this very topic coming up on Thursday. And so this is a great opportunity to do a little trial run on it. Um, and I've been, I've been told I only have about a half an hour today, so I'm going, to, I'm going to do my best to get through it. And I'll kind of zip through it a little bit. Um, but uh, so is that right, Autumn? I got about a half hour? Yeah, we ended at 8.30. Okay, perfect. So we will uh, we will keep this thing rocking and rolling here. So I'd like to start out by asking a question. Um, and you can give me a thumbs up if this is a yes for you or whatever. But how many of you need extra motivation? You need a, a motivational speaker. You need somebody to really push you and motivate you to take your hand off of the stove when it's burning. All right, perfect. None of us. How many of you need motivation, need someone to give you extra, you know, that extra push that you need to really get off your butt and go when you have to go to the bathroom really, really bad? <laughs> None of us, right? None of us need extra motivation to do these kinds of things. We know exactly what it is we want to do. We know exactly why it is that we want to achieve that end. And if we look at like a, a uh, somebody who is like a, a police officer, a detective, right? What is the first thing they always look for when they have somebody um, and they're trying to convict them of a crime? What is the first thing, the main thing that they are always looking for? Evidence. Evidence. Great. What else? Probable cause. A motive, right? Probable cause. That's similar, right? I don't know all the language. <laughs> um, but yes, they're, they're looking for some kind of motive, right? And, and the reason for that is it's really hard to convict somebody if they don't have any kind of motive, right? Yeah, you need evidence. You need all these other things. But there has to be a motive. And the reason for that is because we don't do anything uh, as humans without a reason. Now, we might not always be able to define the reason why, right? And I'm, I'm going to throw Jesse under the bus a little bit here, even though he's not here. I remember him and I had a, a, a talk, you know, in the fall of last year. And he was like, I don't know why I do everything that I do. I just go. And my argument to him would be, uh, yeah, on the surface, that's probably true. But deep down, he knows why he's doing the things that we do. And that's true for all of us. And so if we're not creating the kind of success that we want to see in our business or in our life or, or whatever it is, there is a reason why, whether we have uncovered it or not. If we want to make a million dollars in a year and we can define why that's important to us and, and we we believe that and we can, you know, we really connect with that, we will create a million dollars in a year. Um, any of us are capable of doing that. But once again, it just comes down to motivation. And so that's what I want to talk about today is motivation. Why are some people so motivated to go, you know, just they, they say they're going to do it. They do it. They create it. And it's and it's just done. And other people say, man, why does this cycle keep happening to me? You know, I, I, I say that I want this and then I fall into this pitfall and then I, I'm not going to do that anymore. I, I want this. And then we fall into the same pitfall. What's the difference between the two and how can we find a defined motivation um, in our life and in our business so that we can create exactly what it is that we want to create for ourselves? And so uh, I'm going to share my screen here really quick. I've, I'm, I actually don't really do a whole lot of PowerPoints, but I do have a PowerPoint for this one. So I'm going to share this with you guys. Oops. Let's 
So as I said, we're part of the, the Super Agent Collaborative here in Denver. So <clears throat> when we're young, or not even when we're young, but it kind of starts when we're young. When we're young, we have this like core set of values that we have, right? And, you know, we still hold these values. There's certain things that if somebody offends our core values, like we are offended. You know, I can't believe somebody would do that, right? So there are these, these pieces within us that represent like the core of who we are. Additionally, there's also these core desires, right? There's these things that we really want to achieve. So we say, I want to make a million dollars. We say, um, you know, I, I want this kind of relationship. We, we have all of these goals that we set for ourselves. And ultimately, the purpose of those goals is to fulfill a deeper desire, a core desire, right? So those are kind of like topical agents to, you know, uh, give us the the uh, satisfaction of the desire that we actually want in our life. And so at our deepest core, we have these desires. Now, eventually, what happens is we we have these desires and, and life happens to us, right? We, we meet people, we talk to people, we have experiences, things happen to us, and we start to form beliefs about the world. Now, in a perfect world, what would happen is our beliefs would be perfectly aligned with our core values and our core desires. And so, you know, I, I want to be a good person or whatever it is. Um, I want to be happy. And our beliefs are like, I can be happy. I should be happy. I will be happy. So our beliefs align with our desires and our core values. And of course, our belief systems, uh, they influence the way we think. So if I believe that I should be happy, if I believe that I am happy, then I'm going to think happy thoughts. Makes sense, right? Our thoughts then influence the way that we feel. So if we're constantly telling ourselves, uh, man, I believe that I should be happy. I, I, I am happy. So we're thinking that we are happy. Then we're going to feel happy or joyful or whatever it is. So our thoughts influence the way that we feel. Then, of course, our feelings influence the way that we want. So we're all in real estate here. People buy houses, not because they think the house is great. They walk into it and they go, ah, this just feels right. You know, it feels like it's time to move. It feels like our house is too small, right? People make decisions based on the way they feel. Our emotions drive our actions. And so the way we feel influences what we want. So if we feel happy, if we feel joyful, then we want more things that are going to keep us in that state of being. And then, of course, what we want, like I already said, drives our actions. So our actions, you know, are then going to create more of this sense of joy or whatever it is that we want. And then, of course, our actions give us our results. Now, in a perfect world, our results are perfectly aligned with what we truly value, with what we truly want. And when that happens, it's really easy to find motivation. <laughs> if I really want to, 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 you know, feel a certain way or be a certain way or whatever it is, and I'm getting that kind of a result, then it's easy to continue on that hamster. We're like, yeah, let's go get more of this. Yeah, this is fantastic. And so at that point, it's really easy to um, find the motivation that we need to continue moving forward. Now, <laughs> so we look like that. On the flip side, what happens to a lot of us is we have these core values and desires, and this really happens to all of us at some point, right? We still have these core values and desires, these things that we want, but life happens to us and we begin to form these beliefs that are not really aligned with that. And we start to think, well, maybe, maybe I need more money. Maybe that's what will make me happy. Or, you know, maybe I just don't deserve to have that much money, or maybe I'm not worthy, or maybe I'm not able to do what it is that I say, right? So we start to like, run these beliefs. Can anybody relate to that, right? These belief systems that don't necessarily align with what we really want, right? And then of course, those beliefs, <clears throat> once again, influence the way that we think, but now our thoughts start running away with themselves. And we start having all these thoughts that are non-productive, that are getting us further away from what we truly want. But we start running these cyclical thought patterns in our mind, which eventually leads to feelings that once again are less aligned with what we truly want. We start to feel overwhelmed. We start to feel pressure. We start to wonder, you know, what the heck am I doing? Why isn't this working? And we start to have those feelings um, that drive our desire. So then we start to cover up what we really want with 
These are those topical desires that I was talking about, right? So now I'm saying, okay, well, maybe what I want is a bigger house. Maybe what I want is a promotion. Maybe what I want is a better relationship. Maybe what I want is, and we start covering up what we truly want down at the core with what I call topical desires that are out of alignment from what we truly value. Now, there's aspects of those topical desires that that align with this. But generally speaking, at this point, we're starting to create desires that we're hoping are going to create some kind of experience for us. And then, of course, that's going to drive our actions. And then once again, our actions drive our results. Now, in this scenario, we're getting results that maybe they're good results. In 2020, I had my best year ever. I crushed it. I had I had met this goal that I thought I would never be able to achieve. I did not think I was worthy of it. I did not think I was capable of it. And yet I was able to create this result for myself. However, at the same time, I was absolutely miserable. All I did was work. I was in my office all the time. I wasn't spending time with my kids. I was grumpy. You know, my, my family was taking care of me, right? Like, oh, poor dad. He's stressed. Da, da, da. You know, screw that. I don't want to live that life, right? So the results that I was getting were completely out of alignment from what I truly wanted, even though they were good results. And when we get into this kind of state, it's really easy to lose motivation, and that's what happened to me. I was just like <clears throat> throwing my hands up in the air. Like, I don't know what to do. I mean, I go out and I create this thing that I thought I wanted. And then I go, hold on a second. This doesn't, this actually isn't moving the needle. I don't get it. What is right. And so my motivation went way down. And so a big part of motivation is creating alignment. We want to align our core desires, our core values with the results that we're getting. Because when we're in that state of being, we are naturally motivated to go get more of it. Okay, so fantastic. This is great. Uh, how then? How do we find that alignment? Well, the way I look at it is the first thing that we have to do is we have to identify what our core values are, what our core desires are. What do we really, really want? And this takes a lot of time. This takes a lot of introspection. And it's not, it's a, it's a simple process, <clears throat> but it's not an easy process. And so before I go into this next piece here, you know, I just want to throw this out there that, um, are, are any of you lone wolves? Like you can do it all yourself or you try to do it all yourself, Right. Real estate agents, it's like it's it's an epidemic, I'll say, you know, because, listen, we're supposed to be social media experts. We're supposed to be salespeople. We're supposed to be contract experts. We're supposed to be, you know, on and on and on and on and on. I'll just do it all myself. Right. So it's really easy to fall into that trap in our in our line of work with stuff like this. It's you can do it on your own. You can go through this process that I'm talking about here on your own. but um, I would highly, highly, highly find someone to go through this process with you, whether it's a coach, a mentor, a significant other, a friend, somebody, when you go through this process, because what they're going to do is they're going to, hopefully, if, if they're, you know, really uh, interested in your growth, they're going to poke holes in it and be like, well, yeah, well, what about this? And what about that? Right. And they're going to kind of push you a little bit. And so it's really important as you go through this process to have help. We do not have to do this on our own. I have a coach, right? We should all have somebody who's who's pushing us through this kind of stuff and helping us um, clarify it. So, um, and Autumn, is there a way for me to send out um, uh, documents, like a, like a PDF of documents? Yeah, just email it to me and we'll have it attached to the notes and everything. Okay, cool. So, so I'll send you guys something that that takes this screen right here and kind of breaks it down into more of like a worksheet format. But if the objective is to discover what you truly value, what you really want, then these are the eight categories that I look at as being, whoops, how do I go back? There we go. Um, 
that we need to look at, right? So in this um, exercise, what I challenge you to do is to ask these four questions right here. What do you want to experience in terms of money? So what does that mean, experience? Well, you can define what that means, but to me, it's the, what do I want to experience with money? Doesn't mean I want a million dollars. That's what I want, right? And so you might say, oh, I want a million dollars, but the, the question is, what do you want to experience in terms of money? So maybe it's, I want to experience financial freedom. I want to experience, um, what it feels like to not have to worry about money. I want you, right? So what do you want your experience to be when it comes to money? How do you want to grow in terms of money? So in this part, you might say, well, I want to double my income or whatever it is. Um, I want to uh, change the way that I think about money. That could be a growth component of money. How do you want to contribute with money? Maybe you want to give back more to charity. Maybe uh, you want to buy your mom a house. Uh, or, you know, whatever. How do you want to contribute? Maybe you want to uh, build a college fund for your kids, whatever it is. How do you want to contribute? And then what does success look like in terms of money? So yes, this is where you could put, you know, uh, success would look like me having a million dollars in my savings account. Okay, great. You know, um, success might be that I feel really good about where my finances are at. That could be success, right? So you get to define what success looks like for each of these things. Now, once again, this process, not only does it take time on the front end, right? Like, but this is something that you can't really do, I would say, in one sitting. Even if you get answers to everything, the, the goal is not to just, okay, let me fill out this worksheet and then I'm, everything's fine. It's about reflecting back on it. So this, this is a process that could take days, weeks, months. Um, I go through this process with myself multiple times every year just to continue to see how how my values are changing over time, you know, and dig deeper and just to kind of create that uh, that awareness within myself. So this, as I see it, this is really a never ending process because we're constantly growing and changing and, and trying to expand um, or or, you know, it. it that's what we should be looking to do if we want to create a better life for ourselves, I guess, is what I would argue, right? So you go through this whole process here um, and answer in all of these eight categories right here. Um, and yes, by the way, fun and entertainment, that is one. Um, I've been recently talking with my wife quite a bit about how I feel like all of my hobbies have taken a back seat to work. And and I've been wondering, you know, what's missing? What's missing? Gosh, man, I don't, I don't get it. What's going on? And I finally started to realize I don't do woodworking anymore. I don't play the guitar anymore. Um, I've been playing less basketball. Um, you know, I mean, on and on and on. And I, I used to be like the hobby freak. Like I just had hobbies everywhere. And I'm like, I don't do any of them anymore. Okay. Like that's pretty disappointing. Right. And so I like to work things like fun and entertainment into my day. Um, I've gotten away from it, but I'm getting back into it, right? And so going through a process like this can help uncover those kinds of things that will help keep you motivated, right? Because I'm, I lose my motivation when I don't have fun and entertainment. And the last one I'll touch on here is spirituality. That's up to you. What, what does spirituality mean to you? You know, I mean, it, it could be religious. It could just be, uh, it could be a uh, mindset. It could be, um, I mean, I have mind in here, but it could, it could revolve around that. It could be meditation. It could be, uh, connecting with a higher power in some way, shape or form. It could be connecting with community more, you know, it's really up to you what spirituality means to you. Um, so just play around with it and remember there's no right or wrong answer. All right. So I got 10 minutes here. The next thing that you're going to do is you're going to ask why, <clears throat> because once again, we're talking about motive. So we don't do anything without a reason why. We may not know the reason why on the surface, on the front end, but we don't do anything without a, a, a motive. And so it's great to understand, you know, what are the things that we want, but now we need to understand why are those important? And what happens here is we go, if we go through a process, which I call going down the why hole, we start to uncover similarities. So if I start going with money and I pick, okay, what do I want to experience with money? And I, you know, give an answer and I say, well, why is that important to me? And I give another answer. Well, why is that important to me? Another answer. 
Why is that important to me? Why, 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 why? In my experience, you got to go seven to 10 levels deep. A lot of us might ask why three times and it's kind of like, okay, cool. I got to the, the baseline, you know, um, cause I'll feel good or whatever. Well, well, why will it make you feel good? Right. What, what kind of experience is that going to provide for you? Right. So a lot of us will stop early and this is where a coach can really help or a mentor or a friend or whoever to push you deeper and deeper and deeper. And eventually what you'll find or what I have found when, when I work with people is it goes from like people on my team, it goes from like all of these eight categories kind of funnel all the way down to like one may one or two main reasons why this is important to them. And it usually ends at some kind of experience. I want to experience this, not always, but that's kind of where it ends up. So this is really, really valuable because what it does is, is now you take these eight categories that kind of seem a little separated and all of a sudden you'll start to find these commonalities as you go down the why hole and you start to discover why. And it's the awareness then that you, you see with, oh, okay, so the similarity is, is whatever it is. That then becomes a focal point. And it's the awareness of like, okay, this is what I'm trying to create right? That awareness is then what creates that stability on the tower where it's kind of like, I know what I want. I'm very clear on what I want now. I don't have only, I not only know what I want, but I know why I want it. That's a motive. And when we connect the head with the heart there, the why kind of helps connect the heart. When we connect the head and the heart and we can feel what and why we want it, motivation naturally begins to show up. And so we might have to make shifts in our life. We might have to make big shifts in our life. We might have to make big shifts in our business in order to create that kind of an alignment. Um, but, you know, it starts with just creating this awareness and asking these questions to yourself. So the next exercise <clears throat> is designed to like, uh, so, you know, if I touch a hot stove, I know that it hurts and I know it's going to hurt for a week. Right. So as soon as I touch it, I'm going to move my hand away. But if somebody's holding my elbow down, <laughs> right, it's hard for me to move my hand away unless I know there's somebody holding my elbow down, then I can slap their hand away and pull my hand away. Right. So the uh, it's kind of a roundabout way of saying we have to understand what's what is getting in our way from creating what we want. So it's great to know what we want and why it's important. Now we have a motive to go do it, but we need to know what's getting in our way from creating that already. Why haven't we already created that? And it's also important to understand our assets because we all have things that we can, we can leverage, right? And once again, back to the lone wolf syndrome, I am a master lone wolfer and it holds me back. I have to become very aware of that, right? There are so many assets around me, both external and internal, that I can leverage to help create more success in my life. And I don't just mean financial. I mean, you know, more success in general. Um, but I have to understand what those are. I have to bring an awareness to those. Otherwise, how can I leverage them or how can I avoid them? And so this exercise is designed for you to just write down your internal attributes and your internal limiting beliefs. So what internally, what skills, traits, you know, uh, talents do you have that can help you get to where you need to go? And then what limiting beliefs are holding you back? Once again, this is where a coach or a mentor or whatever comes in very handy because a lot of times we don't know our limiting beliefs. If we knew what they were, we would work around them. And so this is about creating awareness around what those beliefs are so we can catch ourselves and out. Oh, there it is again. I'm lone wolfing it again. All right. I got to ask for help. And that's okay, right? We have to have the awareness first in order to work around it. And so this exercise is all about awareness. You know what you want, you know why you want it. Now we need to know what's getting in your way and what can help. The external assets, and, and by the way, the internal attributes, this is where so many people get hung up, right? Humility, over humility. Forget about it. Get rid of that crap, right? Pump yourself up. Um, get get real. 
you know, understand what makes you special, right? Lean into that. And then you've got external assets. So it could be maybe money and savings or, you know, people or whatever. And then external obstacles, some things you can control and some things you can't. So it's important to kind of distinct distinguish um, between the two. Um, so I'd love to dive into that more, but I only got a couple minutes here. So I'm going to keep going. The last step is... This is the Nike symbol. What's Nike's, uh, what's Nike's, uh, just do it. Just do it. Just do it. (laughs) Just do it. Just do it. You know what you want. You know why you want it. You know what's in your way. You know what assets you have. You just have to take action. And of course, this is easier said than done. Right. Um, I, but the bottom line is you just have to do it. So with that being said, What are some things that we can do if we're struggling to take action and somebody's just like, just go do it, just just go. And we're still struggling a little bit. First of all, you can always go back to the first two things that we were just looking at, because if you can find that alignment, you'll have much more success in just doing it. But here's some other ideas. Ask yourself, what's the worst that could happen? I know what I need to do. I know what I want to do. And I'm still struggling to take action. What's the worst that could happen? It's probably like, if you get real about it, it's probably not that bad. It's probably something you can weather. So who cares? <laughs> right. Um, start small. So you don't have to eat the elephant at once. Take a little tiny bite, make one phone call and then two and then three and then four. And the next thing you know, you got 40, right. Um, have faith that it's going to work out. It will all be okay. I promise you, everybody on this call is a very resourceful human being. You've made it this far. Um, You will be okay, right? We have the ability to navigate challenging circumstances, even if the worst happens, just have faith that it will work out okay in the end. And lastly, get help. Don't lone wolf it. Have somebody around who can help push you through the hurdles and the obstacles. Um, Here's some other ideas uh, to help motivate yourself. Become a leader. Uh, You know, I'm actually a former science teacher. I taught middle school, eighth grade science for seven years and I hated chemistry. I was terrible at it in high school and college. I took as little as I possibly could. And then I had to teach it. And I'm like, oh, this is actually kind of fun. I get what an ionic bond is. Oh, that's cool. (laughs) Right? So becoming a leader, putting yourself in a position where you need to motivate other people or help other people, uh, push other people, you begin to learn about yourself. Oh, well, I'm telling other people to do this, but I'm not doing it. Maybe I should do it, right? And so becoming a leader can help reward yourself. There's lots of different ways that you can reward yourself. Once again, I'll have a worksheet with that kind of breaks these out a little bit more. Um, learn new skills and advance your career. That's a really good way to... Um, just kind of keep yourself motivated. You know, like I I got into divorce real estate for a couple of years. It was fascinating. Um, Very tough, very difficult. Um, But uh, man, just the advancing those skills was fantastic. Uh, Once again, recognition and accolades. I'm going to, I'm just going to hit on this one real quick. Um, If you're anything like me, you guys are really good at uh, sweeping your accomplishments under the rug. Yeah, that was great. Okay, high five. Let's go. And on to the next thing. And we completely forget to celebrate. Right? And I've got story after story after story of this, but I have learned that celebrating our accomplishments is so important. Recognize yourself. Give yourself accolades. That's great if your team gives you accolades and that kind of stuff. That's great. But it re- what really matters is are you celebrating yourself and the hard work that you put in? You don't have to go buy a new car to celebrate. It can just be a conscious recognition of like, I did that. I'm making progress. Good for me. Right? <laughs> so really important to do that. Um, take some time for yourself with the personal satisfaction and fulfillment. Um, join a team. Uh, and. Uh, This last one, I could teach a whole class just on this. If anybody follows Joe Dispenza, this is a kind of a a takeaway from him. Remember your future. 
Um, instead of remembering your past, like when we re- when we act in a way that is in alignment with the way things have always been, we get the same results we've always gotten. But when we look forward and we visualize who we want to be and what that's going to feel like, we make connections about our future and we remember our future and where we're going and we make decisions based on that, it drives us forward into a better life for ourselves. And so hopefully that makes sense. I know that's a a very quick rundown of it. But if you guys are not following Joe Dispenza, I would highly recommend it. He's he's got a lot of great work in this uh, in this field. So um, with that. I will stop sharing. And do we have time for questions, Autumn? Sure. You said you're teaching this class this week? I am, yeah. I'll be teaching it at uh, Chicago Title on uh, Madison Street at 2 o'clock on Thursday. I can drop a uh, Eventbrite link in here if that's helpful. Yeah. Cool. Any other questions? Oh, man. I made it to the gym this morning, even though I didn't want to. And I worked out last night at 930. So I went from 930 to 1030 last night and 630 to 730 this morning. So I did. I didn't want to, but I did it anyway. (laughs) <laughs> right on and how'd it feel i feel a lot better now because it's only 8 30 and i'm ready to roll right on man good for you Thanks for I was, um I, in that gratitude section you talked about um going out to celebrate with the car <laughs> i almost did that <laughs> well, i'm not saying you shouldn't <laughs> No, I'm going to Cabo instead. I was going to get a Corvette, but I decided to go to Cabo. There you go. Good for you. (laughs) Corvettes are not. I don't have the knees for a Corvette. I don't know how those old folks do it, man. It's it's hard. (laughs) That's a status thing for old guys like me. (laughs) Yeah, I couldn't do it, man. I I just. Grant Cardone says, don't waste your money on cars and that, you know, buy real estate. That's your next move. Buy real estate. Yep. <laughs> you're right. You're right. So you yeah, don't have to work. Then you can buy the car. <laughs> yep. I, I, what, I wrote a book in 2020. And this is where I really learned this lesson. My coach was like, so what are you going to do to celebrate? And I was like, what are you talking about? It's, it's only in editing. It's not even done yet. I can't celebrate yet. And he's like, you idiot, wake up. You know, <laughs> he's like, what's something you've wanted for a while? And I'm like, I've been wanting to get golf clubs. He's like, Go buy golf clubs, you know. And I was like, okay, yeah, you know. So I got new clubs, and now I'm beating all my friends. No. Oh wow! I wish. I wish. Investment. <laughs> yeah. So, so tell me, Daniel. Um, I spent quite a bit of time in Colorado when I was working the school circuit. You know, working really? doing <laughs> credit cards, believe it or not. But um, so now that Denver has Russell Wilson, what's the real, true <laughs> feeling? <laughs> we made a huge mistake. <laughs> well, hey, hey, we I've had to... season tickets for 17 years, and the fact that we lost him, everybody was freaking, but we gave him up at the perfect time, and the draft picks we got are just making us that much better. <laughs> so, yeah. We got a new coach. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Who knows? Anyway, he's a good guy. You know, we just got yeah. the prime out of him and gave him up and got lots yeah. of draft picks and players for it. <laughs> he hasn't accepted any of my lunch invites, so I haven't had a chance to talk to him about it yet. <laughs> well, he, I wish I'd have been his agent. He sold a $30 million house here when he left. Yeah. Well, and I'm sure he bought something similar here. So. All right. Well, cool. appreciate your time today. What's that? Appreciate your time today. Yeah. Thank you guys. Uh, I'll put my email in here as well, just in case you want to reach out for anything. Um, and I put that event bright link in there as well, Sean. Okay, cool, man. Appreciate it. Sweet. Well, thanks for being here, guys. I really appreciate it. And uh, yeah. And a little shout out to G. She's fairly new. I've been with my her broker for about eight years, but uh, she's already sponsored four or five people and closed a couple deals. So she's uh, she's yeah. the funny one of the group, I guess. I don't know. Right on. Congratulations. She's always out, out there going. They needed yeah. a joker in the team. That's me. 
Well, yeah. hey, it seems you, to be you working. You took over my role, which is just fine. I know. So you were graduated. But hey, we was making money while we were joking. So that's good, right? I know. All right. Have a good day, you guys. All right. See you guys. If you'd like more information or to get connected to the Agent Power Huddle, join our free Facebook group. This call was designed for the agents in our EXP organization, but open to any agent from any brokerage. If you're a guest and you're interested in learning more about EXP or our specific resources within the Agent Collective, reach out to the person who invited you to this call to get more info. Produced by the Agent Collective Media Network.